she's the most famous missing person in the world. Please continue to pray for Madeline. She's lovely. Ten years ago tonight, Madeline McCann disappeared. But we're still finding out more about the case. If you have Madeline, let her come home to her mummy, daddy, brother and sister. Two police forces in two countries came to different conclusions about what happened to her. Did two doctors cover up the death of their own daughter whilst on holiday? Of course not. For the first time, Portuguese detectives tell us what they think. In your heart, do you think it will be solved? It doesn't depend on my heart. It depends very much on our minds. And we find the men the British police have questioned about that night. What did they ask you about the burglary, Mr. Ribeiro? No, 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 What do you remember about it? I remember everything. Ten years on, what happened in this holiday village? What happened to Madeleine McCann? The search for Madeleine McCann has moved a long way from where she disappeared. It's now run from Lisbon by Portugal's most senior detectives. The Polícia Judiciária, or PJ, a Portugal's national criminal investigation force. I've been asking for an interview for 10 years. Now they've finally said yes. I've never been able to talk to somebody from the PGA. Mm -hmm. Why did you think it was important to talk now? Madeleine McCann is a very unique case in Portugal. We've never, we've never had a case like Madeleine McCann before, and since then, never one after. So we really want to know what happened first, because it's still a missing child case. Second, because we want to know in case in the future we face another case like this. Across the city, Madeleine McCann's parents have been involved in an important legal battle this spring. They sued a Portuguese detective who accused them of involvement in their daughter's disappearance. They initially won but there was an appeal. And the Supreme Court, citing freedom of speech, found against them. But it was worse for Madeline's parents. The judges pointed out that the McCanns hadn't been found innocent. Rather, the case had been shelved because the police hadn't been able to gather sufficient evidence to the contrary. A decade since we all first heard Madeleine McCann's name, the case is still alive. And attention is once again falling onto a holiday resort on the Algarve, Praia de Luge. It has always been popular with British families, but Luge changed 10 years ago tonight. Anyone? who may have any information related to Madeline's disappearance, no matter how trivial, contact the Portuguese police. Please, please do not hurt her. Please don't scare her. Please tell us where to find her. So I first came here 10 years ago, and when I was sent here, I, I had no idea what Madeleine McCann as a story would become what this apartment 5A would come to mean. Everybody would kind of know this place and everybody would know that little girl's name. It 
It's nearly a week now. Can you tell us whether you really are any nearer knowing what happened to Madeleine? We are still looking for her and we are pursuing lines of investigation. I have a sort of weird relationship with this place because it's a long time since I first came here. It's a bland apartment and yet something happened in there. Something extraordinary happened in there. A little girl went missing and she's never been found. Luge has also lived with the story for all these years. As we film, people are quick to let us know how they feel. Are you starting the circus already? Uh, we're doing a documentary. What's wrong with that? Because uh, Luce should be left alone. Well, they can again. Why? The waste is taxpayers' money, not go on board. Why? The is taxpayers' money. They're Why? fed up of it. Give it to the bloody National Health. You go away. It's OK. It could go on forever. And for, for the people here, they don't want that. It's just a, a big reminder of something really bad that happened right, right on the doorstep. So how close are we to really knowing what happened to Madeleine McCann? The fact is that two different police forces in two different countries came up with two different theories and both contradict each other. Tonight, we will show you the two theories and why both have failed to solve this mystery. The basic facts are well known. Nine friends went on holiday to the Ocean Club. They went for meals at the tapas restaurant with the green roof. Their eight children, including three-year-old Madeline, had been left sleeping in this apartment block 70 metres away. The friends say they took it in turns to check on the children. At 10 o'clock, it was Kate McCann's turn. She left the restaurant area and went up this road to her corner apartment, number 5A, where Madeline and younger twins, Sean and Amelie, were asleep. She went in through the unlocked patio door and went to the children's bedroom. She then opened the door, looked in, and in the darkness, didn't immediately realise that Madeline wasn't there. She realised the curtains were flapping in the window to the street, and it was open, which is not how they left it. They left the shutters down and the window closed. So it was just this sense of sheer panic and rising fear and terror. She very, very quickly ran around the apartment, checking the wardrobes and other rooms to just make doubly sure. But it was obvious that Madeleine wasn't there, and that's when she hurtled out through the patio doors, shouting that somebody's taken her. Kate McCann told the police that when she came back to the apartment and first realised her daughter had gone, this window at the back of the flat was open. There weren't bars here ten years ago. This is where the family thought she was taken. Much of what we're about to tell you has never been broadcast before. The Portuguese case against the McCanns started right here. Detectives didn't believe Madeline had been abducted through a window. They said these shutters could only open from the inside and there was no forensic evidence that anyone had climbed through the window. The only fingerprint traces were Kate McCann's. We couldn't show it at the time, but this is what Gonzalo Amaral, the original lead investigator, told me about the case. I could give you here all the signs. I told him, for example, that there were no signs of the ruination of that apartment, 
que aquela janela que a senhora Kate McCann diz que estava aberta para a polícia é uma simulação, que não há, em termos de rapto, a possibilidade de rapto é materialmente impossível o rapto. Detectives also had doubts about the group's account of the night. The police didn't believe the McCann's timeline. There were inconsistencies, they say, in the way the group at the restaurant described the events of that night, like the times they went up and down this street to check on the children. The police didn't pull their punches. This is what the PJ's official report said. The statements of the whole group are inconsistent, to which it can be concluded they are all lying. Where are we going? Please. The Portuguese police were also suspicious of the way the McCanns were behaving. They clashed within hours because Madeline's parents contacted the media. A three-year-old British girl has gone missing in Portugal. It's thought that she may have been abducted. The shutters have been broken open and they've gone into the room and taken Madeline. Madeline McCann from Leicestershire was on holiday with her family in the Algarve. <laughs> well, the, the Portuguese police advice was, quote, no media, no media. That might be the Portuguese way, but it is, certainly isn't the British way or, or the why, Western European way. Why would the McCanns feel that they know more than a police force? Richard, by, by midnight, 1 a.m., the British media were being alerted and the British media were beginning to make relevant inquiry. Now, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong. I would do the same if I felt my child was missing and the police officer in front of me was not really wanting to move heaven and earth to get them back. Do they regret it? No, they don't regret doing anything that they felt increased the chances of somebody seeing Madeline, somebody spotting her that could give that lead. We've got a short statement to make. Words cannot describe the anguish and despair that we are feeling as the parents of our beautiful daughter, Madeline. Never forget at the center of this is a child who is missing and they were trying to do all that was humanly possible for their daughter. A British investigator brought in to help the Portuguese says he initially had concerns about Jerry McCann. When I met Jerry, I was struck by how cold and clinical he appeared to be. So I did, you know, you know I'm human as well as having been a police officer. I did think, hmm, and, and, and reflect on that. But I want to say very clearly that as time has gone on, I became absolutely convinced it wasn't the parents. But Portuguese detectives were looking at Kate and Jerry McCann. And central to their theory were two sniffer dogs from the UK. They assist investigations because they can find minute traces of blood or where bodies have been. They were taken into apartment 5A three months after Madeline disappeared. Both reacted. The cadaver dog, which tracks the smell of a dead body, also grabbed Madeline's favorite toy, Cuddle Cat. When the police found out the soft toy had been washed, they became more suspicious. Kate washed it because simply it had become dirty, quite filthy and grubby. She'd been holding on to it in front of the world's media for something like 70 days. If it was that important a piece of evidence, why did the Portuguese police allow her to keep it for 70 days before she even washed it? Can you see why the police might view it as suspicious, though, particularly given that the dogs reacted to it? If you see the video, Richard, the dog pulls it out at one point and then walks past it twice without even going back to it. <laughs> but Cuddle Cat remained part of the Portuguese theory. The sniffer dogs were also taken to check ten vehicles. 
They only barked when they came to the McCann's hire car. The dogs jumped into the boot. Their reaction was widely reported and was seen as damning evidence in Portugal. How can you explain the coincidence of the scent of the cadaver, of cadaver felt by British and not Portuguese dogs? Sandra, maybe you in should be apartment. asking the judiciary because they've examined all this. But don't you, so you don't have any explanation for that? Ask the dogs, Sandra. Ask the dogs, no, Jerry. Now I think that I, f I feel free to ask you. Do you remember talking to Kate and Jerry McCann about the sniffer dogs? Do you remember that exchange? I remember as if it was today. He answered me, ask the dogs. And well, I, replied, the... I replied, I'm asking you, Jerry, I think it was something like that. What did you make of, of Jerry McCann's reaction? I thought he's being arrogant. He's not understanding my point. I'm not offending him. I, I just want him to, to, to give me his opinion. Uh, don't you feel free to answer me? I can tell you that we've obviously looked at evidence about uh, cadaver dogs and they're incredibly unreliable. Unreliable? Cadaver dogs, yes. That's what the evidence shows if they are tested scientifically. He just tried to, to fight. It was a kind of a fight, not a kind of an interview. It got worse for the McCanns. Traces of blood were discovered in the apartment. The police found tiny samples of DNA in the car and in this apartment. And early tests suggested that that DNA could be Madeleine McCann's. The Portuguese had settled on their theory even before they knew the final DNA results. Madeline had died in apartment 5A and her parents had covered it up. The official PJ report concluded, Kate and Jerry McCann are involved in the concealment of the body of their daughter, Madeline McCann. After he left the police, lead investigator Gonzalo Amaral explained his theory in a controversial TV documentary. It was this documentary and a book that led the McCanns to sue Mr. Amaral. I think people in Portugal prefer to believe that a PJ or a former PJ is saying the truth. It's easier for, for the Portuguese to believe that the McCanns are lying. Jerry, how do you feel, Jerry? Four months after she disappeared, Madeleine McCann's parents were made official suspects, or are Guidos. Kate and Jerry McCann have both been today declared her Guidos with no bail conditions. Kate McCann now declined to answer their questions. The police offered her a deal. If she confessed to Madeline's death, which didn't happen, in some sort of accident, which didn't happen, she would get a lesser jail sentence. And it wouldn't affect Jerry. He could come back to Britain and keep earning the family's money. It was outrageous. It was not true. She had answered all of the PJ's questions in at least four interviews, openly, completely collaboratively, up to that point. Two days later, the McCanns left Portugal. I covered their departure for BBC News. What I didn't know was my report would become part of the case. The McCann family flew from the UK as a five. At lunchtime today, they touched down back home as a four. We have played no part in the disappearance of our lovely daughter, Madeline. At the time of Madeline's disappearance, an Irish family, the Smiths, had reported seeing a man carrying a child. When he saw my television piece, Martin Smith believed the man he had seen 
was probably Jerry McCann. It was the way Jared McCann turned his head down, which was similar to what the individual did on May 3rd, 2007, when we met him. I would be 60 to 80% sure that it was Jared McCann that I met that night, carrying a child. The Portuguese had built their case about what happened in apartment 5A, but it soon came tumbling down. Take that sighting by the Smith family. It couldn't have been Jerry McCann because so many witnesses place him at the Ocean Club at the same time. The Smiths themselves now believe they saw someone else. Then there's the dogs. The footage may have looked damning, but it didn't prove anything. Sniffer dogs are only as reliable as the evidence that's found to corroborate their indications. So they'll provide an indication, but a sniffer dog cannot talk. It's not evidence. There needs to be corroboration. And when they came back, the final forensic results didn't back up the barking dogs. Weak and incomplete was the conclusion repeated by scientists. Of the 66 forensic samples from the car and apartment 5A, none directly matched Madeleine McCann. The fact is, Madeline's parents had that car. Madeline's parents were using that car. 50% of Madeline's DNA would have come from each parent. So to have some crossover uh, of DNA is not unusual. And, and I question the professionalism of anyone who drew a substantive position from that, that that gave them evidence that Madeline had been in the boot of the car. This footage shows how DNA from Madeline's parents probably ended up in the boot. And the car wasn't even hired until 25 days after Madeline disappeared. So the PJ believed the parents had hidden their daughter's body for almost a month. Is it plausible that Kate and Jerry McCann, in the full glare of the world's media, hid their daughter's body, pretended to be looking for her, and then a month later, moved the body. There were cameras with the McCanns on the very day the police suspected they moved their daughter's body. As these personal pictures show, the McCanns went to Spain to put posters up. Would they really have agreed to be filmed if they were secretly trying to dispose of their daughter's body? How ridiculous does it sound? It is categorically not true. Something happened in that flat, yes, that removed Madeline from it. Did she die? Did two doctors? cover up the death of their own daughter whilst on holiday? Of course not. It's, and it's ridiculous to suggest it. The evidence does not stack up. Are you hurting the McCanns with, with your book? The theory was falling apart. Gonzalo Amaral was removed from the case. He blamed political interference from London. Mr. Amaral's supporters claim he was taken off the case after an ultimatum from Gordon Brown to the Portuguese Prime Minister at a European summit. Did Gordon Brown take time out of the negotiations for the Lisbon Treaty to talk to you about Madeleine McCann? No, no, of course not. That has been suggested. No, but it's not true. It's not true. The, the lead investigator on the McCann case, Gonzalo Amaral, he has claimed, he may have been joking, that his job was the price of Britain signing the Lisbon Treaty. What do you make of that? Well, I think he considered himself in a high level, but it's not true. The Lisbon Treaty with Gonzalo Amaral, the head of Gon No, no. Um, well, sometimes people um, like to make some characters of uh, 
of a drama that they never lived. In 2008, the Portuguese police shelved the case. The McCanns were told they were no longer suspects. It's hard to describe how utterly despairing it was to be named our Guido and subsequently portrayed in the media as suspects in our own daughter's abduction. For 10 years, the PJ never spoke publicly about their handling of the case. That's now changed. Do you think it was right to make Kate and Joe McCann our guidos back then? When we uh, came up with the team to review the case, was that at that point, um, the McCann were no suspects to us of um, any kind of involvement in the disappearance of uh, Madeleine McCann. So that's what I can tell you about it. So was it a mistake in 2007? Uh, I cannot uh, give you an answer on that. I've repeated, and I'm saying again now, the McCann were no suspects to us. Do you rule them out of any part of Madeleine McCann's disappearance? There is no fact at this point, or evidence that, to say, so that suggests that they were involved in Madeleine McCann's disappearance. The McCanns had set up a charity, the Find Madeleine Fund. With the police no longer looking for her, the family now used some of the money to pay for private detectives, even though it's illegal for private detectives to work on active criminal cases in Portugal. Well, by definition, private detectives detect privately, and as a result, they would use whatever methods were legal um, and at their disposal. But you can't have a private investigator in Portugal, well, can you? That's, not, that's not legal from the technically off. Technically, it's not legal, yes. This is another problem, another problem that you couldn't do that there. However... They did. However, they, we, they employed Spanish agencies, Spanish-based agencies, who had a cultural and language understanding and connection, and whom the PJ were happy to uh, not turn a blind eye, but to work with as long as they didn't step on their toes. Private detectives were the only ones now looking for clues. An agency put people undercover in the Ocean Club, used covert surveillance and lie detectors. One target was Robert Murat. He lived close to apartment 5A, and in the days after Madeline disappeared, had helped the police with translation. Like the McCanns, he was later made an official suspect and then cleared. What was it like to live through those times where people are scratching around for information and, 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 and casting aspersions about you? Um, there's only one word, devastating, um, absolutely devastating. Uh, I was very lucky because um, uh, I have a very, very, very strong family. Um, I have a very strong group of friends and they supported me and, and, and helped me through it. Um, uh, if, if it had been somebody else that didn't have the support I had, um, I'm not sure they'd be here right now. He believes another team of private detectives followed his mother. My mother felt like she was being followed by them and she felt that they, they were there and she'd seen people um, that she felt were actually following her. What did she see? She saw people that she thought were following her, that she kept on seeing. Through their lawyers, the McCanns told us they were not party to any form of intimidation or targeting. They also say they didn't know anything about a deal that was put to me by one of their supporters. I was offered exclusive access to any new developments in the case, an inside track on any new breakthrough, but there was a price. I was expected to act as a spy within the press pack. I said to you before the interview there was a thing that I was going to tell you which I've never told you before. During that period, 
I was offered a deal by somebody inside the McCann camp, not the family, and they said they would give me access to lines from the inquiry, new stories, if I reported back on what the press pack were saying about you. Right, OK. I mean, I, I turned them down, obviously, yeah. but what do you think about that? Um, that would make me incredibly angry, um, again, because, again, you've they've taken the focus away um, from trying to get to the bottom of this, um, find out actually what happened, and trying to put the full focus on somebody else. Uh, and uh, it, it just, it, it just, it's incredulous, as I say. It, it just, it stuns me. And you know it. The effort to find Madeleine McCann was about to shift to the UK. For the first time, we can show you how the second big investigation into Madeline's disappearance came about. How a national newspaper forced the government to fund an unprecedented Scotland Yard operation. I need them my shoes. Are they new? Yeah. And what colour are they? Pink. Lovely. In June 2010, an internal Home Office report had recommended a UK police review of the Madeleine McCann case, but it was ignored for months. Jim Gamble wrote the report. I met with the Home Secretary in the lead-up the end of the summer of 2010, Theresa May, the new Home Secretary. It was made clear to me by her and her private secretary at the time that she hadn't had time to review the McCann report. So, at that stage, I don't believe it had even been read. Madeline's family were told by a national newspaper that it would put pressure on the government. In May 2011, The Sun serialised a book written by Kate McCann. The deal raised half a million pounds for the Find Madeline Fund. The Sun were able to offer a very wide package of how they would handle it. And part of that was putting an appeal on the front page for Mr Cameron, as he was then Prime Minister, to do something about having the Portuguese material properly reviewed and assessed by Scotland Yard. This would be a running request that would have continued to appear in the paper um, should a review not take place. Three sources close to the government decision have told us that this front page and the threat of more to follow changed everything. The Sun got what the McCanns wanted. The government changed its position. A police review was started. My opinion is that that report lay gathering dust uh, up to and until there was another letter published in a newspaper on the front page and that resulted in the government responding in public and instantly uh, commissioning something that we'd asked for much, much earlier. That's not what Theresa May told the Leveson inquiry into the press. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. She said the government had been considering a review before the Sun got involved. I mean, do you feel that any pressure was put on you behind the scenes to order this review or not? I felt that the work that we were doing to look at this review had been going on for some time. It was um, coming to a fruition around this time anyway. Uh, and obviously the issue was a matter of public concern. Theresa May told Leveson that the work had gone on for some time. So it's just coincidence. What do you think? Well, I know that whenever I spoke to her in, in the late summer of 2010, that it wasn't on the agenda because I had presented the report to them. And I know that she hadn't reflected, reviewed, or read it at that time. However it started, the government was now persuaded. Madeleine McCann would be a special case, and Scotland Yard was asked to help. 
clearly I was aware within the media there was uh, a lot of media reports of connections or contacts between newspaper proprietors and senior politicians. Frankly, that was all irrelevant to me. Why? Why was it irrelevant? Because if you're getting the request, you're the, you're the end of it, if you like. Because it wouldn't make the slightest bit of difference to my decision. I'm, I was always very clear of what my responsibilities were. I was the operational lead. And any decisions to get involved in this would be an operational decision, not one for politicians. Were you comfortable with that chain of events? Could you have said, no, we're not getting involved? Yes. Would you have done that? If, if my criteria hadn't been satisfied, yes. Are there legitimate lines of inquiry that we, the Met, can bring expertise to? Do we have the background of dealing internationally that other people don't? Yes. Um, is there precedent? Yes. And is there additional funding for these addi additional pieces of work? Yes. Based on all those four things, well, why would I not want to help? The British investigation into the Madeleine McCann case, Operation Grange, was started. The first job for the man assembling the team was to assess the parents. Even on the first glance of what we looked at, and when we took the information back and ran it through our own understanding and you know verified sightings and accounts and statements and all the rest of it, it was perfectly clear to us that the McCanns themselves had nothing at all to do with the actual disappearance. Why? Because it just it was just it was just obvious from you know that that everything stacked up that they you know they were where they were where they were when the child went missing. Commander Foy chose Andy Redwood to run the investigation. He had a full murder squad, 35 officers and staff. In 2012, he gave his first interview to Panorama. We are here in terms of seeking to bring closure to this case. That would be the ultimate objective for us and is our ultimate objective. What does that mean? Well, closure means establishing what happened to Madeleine McCann. Solving it? Solving it, yes, of course. We've told you the Portuguese theory. Now here's the British. They thought the answer was in the back streets of Praia de Luz, where the tourists seldom go. Scotland Yard have focused on the idea that Madeleine McCann disappeared as part of a burglary that went wrong. It might have a safe upmarket image, but Praia de Luz has suffered from low-level crime. There'd been a spate of burglaries before the McCanns arrived here in 2007. A mini crime wave that it said tour operators and hoteliers tried to keep quiet because it would be bad for business. I was told that there was such concern and alarm amongst hoteliers, villa owners and companies in the area that they had had a meeting with the relevant authorities to discuss what could be done. Um, obviously, to try and stop it, there was, I'm told, concern as well that it was threatening to damage the tourism industry, the image of the Algarve. But of course, Kate and Jerry weren't aware of any of that when, the, when, they, when they arrived. The Criminologist Heriberto Janosch provided Scotland Yard with key evidence to support the burglary theory. Two months and a half before the abduction, there were a burglary there. At the end of this in, run? In the next block, yep. uh, 60 metres from the McCann apartment. Right. And 17 days before the abduction, there was a burglary in the second floor, here in the, next, in the same block that uh, the McCann's. And one week, before the abduction, there was another burglary right above the Madeleine's apartment. Here? There, yes. And the real scene is that the, in the three cases, the modus operandi of the uh, burglary was the same, uh, opening a window from the outside. So burglars were breaking in through windows in the block where the McCanns were staying.
Remember, the Portuguese police said that couldn't have happened to the McCanns because the shutters didn't open from the outside. But they were wrong. Mr. Janosch has demonstrated that they do. They leave the shutters, move the windows pane, the right hand inside, grab the cord and lift the shutter in a normal way, without noise and without damage to the window. Scotland Yard's burglary theory focused on individuals who lived nearby. This is what they thought. Three local men were potentially involved in a burglary here in Luge on the night that Madeleine McCann disappeared. And we know their names. They are Jose da Silva, Ricardo Rodriguez and Paulo Ribeiro. Scotland Yard were particularly interested in their phone records on the night Madeleine McCann disappeared. They show a text and a phone call from Carlos da Silva to Ricardo Rodriguez. They were around the times parents left the tapas bar to check on their children. Then, at 21.51, a few minutes before Madeline is reported missing, there's a 58-second phone call between the two. In my opinion, it was the right time when Madeleine was abducted. So you think that's when she was abducted? Yes, I think that, uh, Madeleine was abducted at uh, 2150, more or less. British police thought that text and those calls were significant. But many Portuguese detectives thought Scotland Yard were clutching at straws. Listen, they lived in the area. If he and I, if we lived in the area and called each other that day, that would not make us suspicious. Those three individuals talked to each other because they were friends. They knew each other. Remember that sighting by the Smith family, the one originally mistaken for Jerry McCann? The British police now believed that sighting supported their theory. Mr. Smith and his family were coming home from a night out in Luge Centre when, at this point, this spot here, they saw a man carrying a child on his shoulder. Now, this was just before 10 o'clock, about the same time that Madeleine McCann was discovered missing at the Ocean Club, which is a few hundred metres in that direction. The British police thought that could be a burglar carrying away Madeleine McCann. They issued these EFITs. All right, no comment for you today, thank you. Morning, Why don't you speak to the morning. Portuguese? Sorry, could this just give him a... Sorry, I'm not able to talk to you this morning. No, thank you very much. The Portuguese police? DCI Andy Redwood brought his team to Portugal to investigate the burglary theory. They spent a week searching an area near where the suspects live. They were not welcomed by all. What they came to do in Portugal was a, a show-off, a joke. You can't look seven years later for the corpse of a little girl in a sewage pipe through which all of Algarve's rainwater had flowed. That's because either the sewage pipe would have blown or transported everything to the sea. You don't look for the corpse of a child seven years later in a field full of herbs and vegetation, as if she had just entered that field. But Scotland Yard pressed ahead and in 2014 issued a formal request to question the three men. They were brought in and made official suspects. I want to hear their side. First, Carlos de Silva. He worked as a driver at the Ocean Club. He's at the heart of this burglar theory and was questioned by the Portuguese police on behalf of the British. And as I understand it, he's just in this supermarket here, so I'm gonna try and grab a word with him. 
He doesn't want to talk. So Mr. De Silva was in that supermarket um, and I approached him um, and, and asked for an interview and he said no, he was quite keen not to talk. Now, he's a man who hasn't been charged with anything, so I've got no right to, to barrel up and demand an interview. I asked him, he made it quite clear he didn't want to talk to me. So that's the end of that. I can't get his side. All three of the men questioned by Scotland Yard have continued to live in Luge and under suspicion. Ricardo Rodriguez is one of the guys we've been trying to track down and we found out he lives here in this block. So I'm just going to knock on his door, see if he'll have a word with us. So we found the address of Mr Rodriguez. It was quite difficult to get that, lots of digging, but we got it. Knocked on his door, no response. Probably out. Could have been in there, chose not to talk to us. Doesn't have to talk to us. We just wanted to get his side, but we can't find him. We can't get him. Mas pronto, e, e a sua vida continua normal? Continua normal. Então há algumas pessoas que dizem que foi. As we're filming, the third suspect turns up and agrees to talk to our translator. Doesn't have parents, see. Paulo Ribeiro was asked 250 questions by the British police, including. Did you kill Madeleine McCann? So foi com a polícia inglesa e a polícia portuguesa, não é? Sim. Só foi com a polícia inglesa. Só foi com a polícia inglesa. Sim, só foi com a polícia inglesa. Mas eles depois havia lá a polícia portuguesa que falava consigo, não é? Fazia umas perguntas. Sim, sim. Sim, sim. E pronto. Mas naquela noite que quando quando o Mary desapareceu, pronto, onde é que estava nessa noite? Lembra? Se recorda? Estava em casa. E não assaltava casas. Eles não acusaram o Sr. Ribeiro de ter assaltado não, não, casas. Não, eles não, não disseram não, nada disso. Não, 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 disse. Não? E a polícia inglesa, o que é que eles queriam saber? Só onde é que estava na altura? Mas era um leão. Mas a feta do teu. Pois, exato. O que você pensou quando perguntaram sobre se você estava envolvido em Madeleine McCann's desaparecimento? O que é que achou na altura quando a polícia perguntou se estava envolvido com o desaparecimento de Madeleine McCann? Achei um espanto porque eu não sabia de nada quando a polícia me passou à porta com um papel, com um desenho a dizer que era parecido comigo, que alguém tinha feito uma acusação à minha pessoa, que eu era parecido com a pessoa que tinha raptado a Mary. E eu não sei quem foi essa pessoa e são os anjos é que não eram muito iguais do desenho de resto. Yeah. They came there with an efet. Police came to his house with an efet and said somebody had said that he looks very similar to the person uh, that was seen walking with a with a child. So that was the occasion. But he was he was amazed by that. Paulo Ribeiro and the other two men told British police they had nothing to do with Madeleine McCann's disappearance, and the Portuguese police clearly believed them. What do you think of that, having seen all of the evidence? I cannot say what I think. I can only say that uh, um, we questioned those people uh, on request of the Metropolitan Police and only based on the request of the Metropolitan Police. As I understand it, the PJ didn't ever think that was a viable theory. We never questioned those people. Uh, we never... Um, we never questioned those people, we never saw or looked at those people as suspects of the crime. This burglary theory is absurd. Not even a wallet disappeared, no television disappeared, nothing else disappeared, a child disappeared. What did the British taxpayer get for their money? Nada. Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely. Nothing. But that is a problem of yours, the British taxpayer. It's cost more than £11 million so far. Last week, Scotland Yard made an announcement. They say there's no evidence to implicate the three men who had been suspects for almost three years. And the case against them is now closed. But we've discovered something else. 
Scotland Yard also interviewed the man who took the McCann's booking, the reception manager at the Ocean Club. He was first interviewed by the Portuguese back in 2007. So this is the witness statement of uh, Vitor de Santos. He took the bookings. In fact, he took the booking for the McCann family. And he says that he, he saw the scene of the, of the flat of 5A, and to him, it didn't look like there'd been a break-in. Now, we've also got hold of this, which is... It's from the PJ file, so it's the investigative files, and it's a list of the people who worked um, at the Ocean Club at the time of Madeleine McCann's disappearance. He's right down at the bottom here, Vitor Manuel de Jesus Santos. When you look at the list, there's a cross by all of these names, as if they've been ruled out. And then you get down to the bottom, and by Vitor Santos, there's a question mark. That was 10 years ago. I want to know why he was questioned by the British police. The first piece of information we got was just a name, nothing else, Vitor Santos. Then we did some digging, and we found out that Mr. Santosh now makes a living by running tourists around the bays to the east of Luch. He's moved five miles down the coast and he works in the nearest town, which is Lagosh. The problem in terms of finding him is that there are a lot of boat operators in Lagosh. We found him. The man who took the booking for the McCann family holiday the man who had the keys to every room. Is that Vito there? Vito? Yeah. Vito? Yes, over there. Yeah, I can have a word with him. Yeah, sure. Thanks. It's the first time he's spoken to the media. Hello. Vito Santos. Santos, yes. Pleased to meet you. Nice I'm sorry to, meet to you. come no and shout you on the wall. My name is Richard Bilton. I'm a BBC reporter. Yes. As you can see. Can I, can I ask you a couple of questions? Yes. OK, so did you work at the Ocean Club back in the day? Yes. What, what did you do there? Why? <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. I mean, we're, we're, two reasons. We're, we're doing a documentary, so exactly, yes. we're looking at those periods. And it, as I understand it from the PJ files, you, yes. you, 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 took a, you took the booking for the family, is that right? Exactly, yes. C can you tell me about that? Do, what do you remember about it? I remember everything. But uh, now I'm here because I lost my job. Why did you lose your job? Because the, the main reasons why, why I have the, the proper letter, the McCann was the... I lost the job, that's it. Wow. And the, the people said it's because the Maddie McCann reasons I lost the job. And do you remember the McCann? Do you remember the group that they were with? What can you tell us? Well, uh, I don't talk anymore about that. OK. So one of the things is, um, have you spoken to the British police? Yes. What did you tell them? Well, I just make the question. I have... Well, I'm here because another reason I don't speak with you. I, I understand. So, have the British police said that they want to talk to you again? No, never more. The last time was 2014, 2015. What did they say to you then? Make the question as, uh, as usual. Uh, the same question as uh, when the, the girl was missing. That's it. Did they ask you whether you were anything to do with Madeleine McCann's disappearance? Well, uh, the people ask just uh, the things about our job because I was the, the head of some departments, and I, but now I lost the job. I have to do this, unfortunately. D did you have anything to do with Madeleine McCann's disappearance? Me? Yes. About what? Did you do anything? Were you there on the evening? Did you do anything you can help us with? Well, I, I already speak with the police. That's it. What did you tell them about that night? Only questions about the, the timetables and the things like that and the stuff because I have the head of the, the reservation and the reception and I speak about... It's a normal question. Mr De Santos says he had nothing to do with Madeleine McCann's disappearance. As for Operation Grange, it's been scaled back but it isn't over. It's got a new head, new money, and a new lead. Police investigating the disappearance of Madeleine McCann in Portugal nearly 10 years ago have been granted more money to extend their inquiry. 
there to get an extra £85,000 to continue for another six months. So we've got some critical lines of inquiry. They're of great interest to ourselves and our Portuguese colleagues. And there are some significant investigative avenues that we're pursuing. It's been reported that the new lead is a woman seen acting suspiciously outside apartment 5A. But former Scotland Yard officers believe the investigation is being wound down. I remember as a detective superintendent and also detective superintendent on the murder command stopping cases and saying, there is no more, we cannot go on. And I, I've done that, and that hurts, because as a murder investigator, you want to bring people to justice. But if you don't have the evidence, then you can't do that. And it's maybe time that someone said to Kate and Jerry, despite everything, we've done everything, but enough is enough. And maybe, you know, in the passage of time, in years to come, allegiances change, and then we might find out what happened. But at the moment, I think 10 years on, it's time to say enough is enough. The British search for Madeleine McCann only has funding until September, but the Portuguese say they have no deadline. As the years roll on, does it become harder to solve? As in any other case, as the years roll on, it, is, it gets harder. That's true in this case. You know more about this case than almost anyone else. Do you think in your heart it will be solved? Uh, if it depended on my heart, uh, the case would have already been solved, but it doesn't depend on my heart. It depends very much on our minds. There's never been a case like Madeleine McCann. Sure, it's a huge amount of money. I just look at the human factor. The human factor is this little girl missing and we don't know why. We don't know what happened. This week, Madeline's parents said even after 10 years, they haven't given up hope. No parent's going to give up on their child unless they know for certain their child's dead. We just don't have any evidence. So My you've hope got to... of Madeline being out there is no less than it was almost 10 years ago. I mean, apart from those first 48 hours, nothing actually has changed since then. I mean, no, I think the difficult thing has always been, how will we find her, you know, because you're relying on the police doing everything they can. And you're relying on somebody with information coming forward. Are we going to post it today? Ten years, two theories, but so far no solution. The truth about what happened here, what happened to Madeleine McCann, seems as far away as ever. <laughs>